Prime Minister, what is your assessment of Sri Lanka's economy at the moment? And uh, we understand that the United Nations says your country faces, quote unquote, a full blown humanitarian emergency. Do you agree with this? Yes. In addition to that, there is a man made economic crisis. Who's the man who's made it? The politicians, they say. And certainly the uh, government that was in power earlier. Do you want to name anyone? Well, I think most of them, no, the government carried on. So the whole, whole lot. But they say not only this government, that government, the previous government, the politicians are responsible. Yes, in a way we have to admit that we, we, we all have a responsibility for the downfall of this system. And we should change now. That is the challenge to all our members of parliament. Are you willing to change or not? Some are, others aren't. So final is the politics of Sri Lanka will be decided on those who are willing to change and come anew and those who are not. Do you think the president should take part of the blame? He has taken the part of the public, he has taken the blame. Not but once, but twice. Huh? But he's not leaving office. No, he's not leaving office. The president has to resign. You can't throw him out of office and you can impeach him. But under the formula, uh, the proposals put by the Bar Association, there's no need for him to uh, leave office. So you're asking me a question in, in an issue which I was not involved. Everyone else was involved. And this is the position they took. I was not even consulted. I left out of it. So I, I can't. But well, I'm sure you have an opinion. Do you believe that the president should leave and take full responsibility of the way? Yes, taken. Yes. After he took responsibility, they wanted him. You're asking me. The, all the parties said he must abolish the seventh, uh, 19th Amendment. He must bring back the 19th Amendment. And he must abolish the executive presidency. So in politics, that everyone tries to survive. Then why did you uh, put forward these proposals? Why did the others agree with it? It's a, it's a game of survival. Okay. Then maybe they gave the proposals that helped the president. I think the question is who's, who's looking at Sri Lanka's survival and, and recovery? How no, but I, I think now on this situation, let's all get together and get the economy up. We have to get the economy out. We have to make the political changes and be ready for, to face a humanitarian crisis. But I must say, I must say the leaders of the opposition and others agreed that on the food crisis, food security program, they will come together. We've had some good discussions with them and agreement on the 21st Amendment too. It's a question of building more trust between the members. And I know many of the backbenchers on both sides feel that they should work together. And I, I'm pushing for that. I'm pushing it very hard that they should all work together. And uh, all should be given responsibility. So some people in the opposition are good at certain activity. Give them responsibility. This is a difficult time. You, you can't be sticking to the normal confrontational uh, parliamentary politics of the British type. We have to work together. We, we must, otherwise the system will not survive. So I'm all for everyone working together. So that is, so I'm, I'm not looking at the party who said this party supports me, that party doesn't. I'm in a position I can speak to everyone. I've been speaking to them. And I made it my uh, mission to try and get everyone together. How long do you think recovery will take? I think a recovery, stabilization and recovery will take about 18 months. Right. Um, earlier this week, you also told Parliament that Sri Lanka needs six billion dollars over the next six months to maintain a basic standard of living. Where do you propose to get that money from? Well, partly from the, once you get an uh, agreement with the IMF, you will have a tranche coming in from IMF for some of your reforms, well, before the end of the year. Then uh, we can go to the other multilateral lenders as well as to the donors of Sri Lanka. What kind of help are you getting from China, sir? China gave us some assistance earlier. They gave a credit line. They have another credit line that has come in, but we can't use it because we haven't got three months reserves. Have you discussed the possibility of restructuring loans from China? They make up 10% of your external debt. We have to take up restructuring all the loans, from both from the donors as well as the private investors. It's a, in the case of the donors, it's that we have to ensure that all of them agree to the restructuring plan because only Japan uh, is in the Paris Club. 
China and India out of the Paris Club. So we've got to get agreement among them. But I'm asking specifically about China. Have you discussed restructuring of these loans? MET has been taken up. I have not discussed yet, but I will be discussing with China. Do you know what the response from Beijing was? There has been no response so far. Because the high, uh, ambassador in Beijing is also discussing it with the government there. Would you say that China has ditched Sri Lanka in its hour of need? I won't say that. I don't think they have ditched Sri Lanka. But they've not been forthcoming in any of the kind of help that I think your country needed, even that $1.5 billion uh, credit line, as you said, you cannot use. Well, actually, we should have gone and negotiated with them to delete that provision. We didn't. That's what, what I can't understand, why we didn't uh, ask them to delete that provision. So we've just made a request now, but the agreement is signed. China has shown interest, and it's a question I'm working it out. The president of your country has said that uh, China is not interested in helping Sri Lanka anymore. Do you agree? But China is interested in helping us. I can tell you what he said. Um, and I'm quoting, my analysis is that China has shifted their strategic focus into Southeast Asia. They see more strategic interest in the Philippines, Vietnam, Cambodia, that region in Africa. They have less interest in this region. I would say China has a lot of interest in this region. And you all know better than us with the Himalayan border. I, I don't think they have left, uh, lifted their interest in South Asia, in Sri Lanka, in the islands, the Maldives. Says, I think the interest is still there. So you're saying that the president's uh, reading of the situation may not be very accurate? Excuse my reading of the situation. What do you Otherwise want to... you will not be moving troops around in Ladakh. You want to t tell me more about that? What is your reading of the situation no, no, I, there? I, I, it in has Ladakh? interest in South Asia to begin with. The Himalayan situation where the two armies are facing each other. Then down here they are working with Pakistan, even on the, with Nepal. And uh, they, they've kept their interest in South Asia. I, I, I would, in my analysis, the interest is there. How are they engaging with Sri Lanka at the moment? Well, with this Sri Lanka, at the crisis, the last few months, they've been silent. I don't know how much the government had negotiated earlier, but uh, I, I intend to start talking with the Chinese and uh, get them into the donor conference. They've agreed to get into the donor conference and get help that way. You're saying last few months they've been silent. Last few months have been the worst phase for Sri Lanka since its independence. Do you not see that as a betrayal when your country really needed uh, donors slash investors like China? They, no, they, they, they helped in some ways, but the big arrangement didn't come through because we focused on India and the government uh, focus was on India. I don't think uh, they could get much from Japan or China at that time. So you're saying that if anything was lacking in terms of an engagement, it was Colombo's fault and not necessarily Beijing? No, but we, it's not fault. We decided that we'll go along with India because India came up with the money quickly. And that's what we wanted. It's a question of who had less red tape. India had less red tape? For the first time. <laughs> <laughs> what is your expectation from India? No, you get help and I must say Prime Minister, Minister of Finance, Minister of Foreign Affairs all took a personal interest, so we, we, we could work along that. Actually, your higher bureaucracy was working with us, so that was, that was the reason that more than any other country, we could work with India, and things were getting settled by over the phone. Uh, your high commissioner here was in touch with most of us, and our high commissioner there was also dealing there, so the, the relationship really worked. And maybe because India didn't have so many commitments to other countries, you know, once you are like uh, China or Japan or others who are lending out to a large number of countries, you've got to look at the impact on all the other countries. If I give to one, will the others, in the case of India, you didn't have those commitments. So you're able to move much faster than China or Japan. <coughs> that sounds unfortunate. You're saying India came up to Sri Lanka's head because it was less distracted or had fewer commitments. That's what yes, so that's good. We're lucky. It's our fortune. Right. Have you spoken to Prime Minister Modi? Not yet. I've been talking with the, minister, the two ministers, We're settling it at that level. I speak to the Prime Minister once we work it. I had a long chat with the Finance Minister and also with uh, Mr. Jai Shankar. The, I've been talking with him even before this crisis when I met him in uh, Abu Dhabi. We had a long chat. I told him the crisis will come. 
What will you tell Prime Minister Modi? Thank you. Okay. How much do you have in foreign reserves at the moment? Uh, some days I sit here and see how I can raise $30 million to $50 million for a ship. Poor ship. That's, that's what we have at the moment. No, that, that's, some days I have to do that. Some days we'll have more. But there are times we are seated here wondering uh, where do you find the money for the next shipment. On Thursday you said that the next three weeks will be a difficult time for sourcing fuel. Last month you yes. also turned to Russia to ease fuel shortages. Do you propose to buy more oil from Russia going forward? I don't know whether any other... Uh, uh, whether they will be going back to Russia again. They are looking at oil sources. Mainly we are looking at West Asia, uh, traditional sources. People are coming along with offers. Uh, there are a lot of offers now. I mean, basically, we, the offers exceed our requirements about fourfold. But how many of them will be, can be realized, I do not know. Russia, we did buy a shipment from Russia. It's difficult. We find that uh, many of our financial arrangements will fall into place after that. Especially... Once we finish the negotiations, the IMF technical team, it, it certainly will give a better atmosphere. Russian oil is soon going to be subjected to the European embargo. Do you think that it's an unfortunate turn of events that, that countries like yours are being sucked into a faraway war with Europe's politics, you know, having a bearing on you? I don't know whether one shipment in this crisis would make that much of a difference. Uh, the issue really has come with India and India's regular purchase, but then Russia and India has had a long economic relationship which India will not sacrifice for the sake of the, uh, their security dialogues. So that's, that's, what, that's where India is facing it. We just had one shipment. But as far as the food is concerned, there is no embargo on food, so you could get it. But what we require is more rice than wheat. Weon is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.